Good morning. Good morning. My name is Cadet Lieutenant Commander English, Company Commander of the Washington High School Navy Junior ROTC Unit, and I will be serving as your Master of Ceremony. Welcome everyone, especially our veterans, to the Hatchet House for our virtual Veterans Day celebration. Parade the colors. Cadet Petty Officer, third class, and company chaplain, Chris Wood, will now present our invocation. Good morning. Please bow your heads and pray. Today, God, we give you thanks for all, the, for all who serve our country. We honor them for their, grateful, for their faithful service in defending and preserving our freedom. We are grateful to those who serve during times of peace, standing ready, bravely awaiting their call to duty. We are grateful for those who serve during times of unrest, enduring conflict, and bearing the physical and spiritual wounds of war. We ask that you bless them, heal their wounds, and give them peace. We thank you, God, for all our veterans, those generations past and present. May we never forget what our country has asked them and what they have given in return. On all of us gathered here today, we ask your favor. Lord, may we enjoy the peace that passes all understanding and is only found in you. Through your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce our principal here at Washington High School, Brian Hall. The Proclamation 10492 of November 7, 2023, Veterans Day 2023, by the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Today, we honor generations of patriots who have earned the title of American Veteran, a badge of courage that unites the finest group of former service members the world has ever known. With their selfless sacrifice, the armed forces have forged and defended the very idea of America, a promise of freedom and equality, democracy and justice, possibility and hope. We owe them an incredible debt that can never fully be repaid. Veterans Day is personal to the Biden family. We have felt the pride that comes 
with seeing your child wear the uniform of the United States and the pain of long deployments far from home. We know that it is like to pray, what it is like to pray every day for the safe return of someone you love. We have stood in awe of our veterans who carry the lasting wounds of war. We pledge to continue to work to return our prisoners of war and those still missing in action to commit to remember the sacrifice of families of those who have served. As both a father and a commander in chief, the president firmly believes that our one truly sac sacred obligation as a nation is to properly prepare and equip the brave men and women to send into harm's way and to care for them and their loved ones when they return home. That is why as president uh, was very proud to sign the Sergeant First Class Health Heath Robinson honoring our promise to address a comprehensive toxic acts or PACT Act, the most significant expansion of benefits and services for our veterans in more than 30 years. As the name suggests, the PACT Act fulfills a promise to our veteran community. By funding our new facilities, enabling better research and expanding care and compensation for veterans exposed to toxic, toxic substances during their military service, as well as helping their survivors access life insurance, home loan assistance, tuition benefits, and monthly stipends, we are giving back to those who have given so much for all of us. This law bolsters other bills that, I, that has been signed this year to improve health care for veterans, from providing mammograms and screenings for service members exposed to toxins, to compensating veterans deployed or developed cancer and other medical conditions from our World War II nuclear program. And to ensure we continue to meet the sacred obligation to our veteran families, caregivers, and survivors, the First Lady Joining Forces Initiative is helping military spouses find jobs, supporting children of service members in classrooms, and extending physical, mental, and emotional services to families. The Department of Veterans Affairs, the VA, and other federal agencies are also working around the clock to end veteran suicide and veteran homelessness. As part of comprehensive public health strategy, that we released last year, the VA is funding community-led suicide prevention programs that meet veterans where they are, increasing public awareness about the importance of firearm storage in preventing suicides, and requesting billions more from, college to from Congress to improve mental health care services for patients across the country. At the same time, with funding from My American Rescue Plan, the VA is on track to permanently house 38,000 homeless veterans this year alone. Fulfilling our nation's promise to our veterans and military families also means ensuring that everyone who serves, no matter their gender identity, sexual orientation, race, or religious background, feels safe and valued in the ranks. Since coming into office, President Biden has made historic reforms to the military justice system that enhance safety and protection for service members and veterans who have experienced sexual assault or harassment. Secretary McDonnell issued a zero tolerance policy that announced that harassment and sexual assault, including sexual harassment and gender-based harassment, will not be tolerated within the Department of Veteran Affairs. This is also a priority for Secretary of, of Defense Lloyd Austin who has made preventing sexual assault and restoring the trust in the military justice processes a constant focus. Additionally, we reversed the discriminatory ban on transgender services and directed a review of all policies and practices to ensure greater inclusivity of the LGBTQ plus veterans. In every generation, American veterans have been willing to give all for that which we hold sacred freedom, justice, and democracy. They have served selflessly, sacrificed greatly, and shouldered the burden of freedom quietly, asking no glory for themselves. Today, let us honor them by living up to their example, putting service before self, caring for our neighbors, and working passionately to build a more perfect union worthy of all those who protect our lives and liberty. In respect and recognition of the contributions of veterans and their families, caregivers and survivors have made to the cause of peace and freedom around the world, the Congress has provided that November 11th of each year shall be set aside as a legal public holiday to honor our nation's veterans. Now, therefore, as President of the United States of America, 
Joseph R. Biden does hereby proclaim November 11, 2023, Veterans Day. He encourages all Americans to recognize the valor, courage, and sacrifice of those patriots through appropriate ceremonies and private prayers by observing two minutes of silence for our nation's veterans. He also calls upon the federal, state, and local officials to display the flag of the United States of America and to participate in patriotic activities in their communities. In witness thereof, the President hereunto set his hand on this seventh day of November in the year of, the, of our Lord 2023 in the independence of the United States of America, the 248th. Good morning, I'm Senior Chief Brown. It's my pleasure to introduce our new Naval Science Instructor, uh, Chief Petty Officer Thomas Sparks. Thank you, Senior Chief Brown, and thank you to the Washington Community Schools for allowing me the honor of speaking here today. I am Chief Petty Officer Retired Thomas Sparks. I am a native of Petersburg, Indiana, where I reside with my wife and children. By U.S. Code, a veteran is a person who served in the active military, naval, or air service, and who is discharged or released under conditions other than dishonorable. That is the textbook definition of a veteran. But being a veteran is more than just having served in the military. It comes with the weight of knowing that freedoms have, have to be defended, that prisoners of tyrannical governments have been liberated, Children that otherwise would not be able to have an education now sit in a classroom, and you have helped support their future, you have helped defend freedom, you have helped liberate humans. Every veteran is more than a culmination of their service, though. They are parents and children, brothers and sisters. They work in every job market, they are friends, they are acquaintances, and they are strangers. They are strong and fragile, young and old, every ethnicity you can imagine. They also have fears and doubts. They deal with the mental and physical scars of armed conflicts. They deal with the financial issues. They deal with divorce. They deal with the loss of close family members. Some are homeless. Some are very successful. Some are our political leaders, and some are living their dreams. I take a great deal of pride in service to this country, but I also don't wake up every day thinking that I'm a veteran. I wake up and think that I'm happy to be here. I wake up and think that I'm happy to be alive. I'm proud to be a father. I'm proud to be a husband. I'm also proud to be an educator. I'm proud to be living in a country where we have freedoms and rights. Freedoms and rights provided proudly by those who went before me. So when you see an older veteran, you see someone wearing a hat that says Vietnam veteran, or Korea War, or World War II if you're lucky enough, take the time and effort to thank them for their service. Because when we say thank you for your service to the country, the country is you. The country is the people of the United States. So when someone says that they served our country, it means that they fought for you. They served you, they served your parents, they served your grandparents, they served your children, they served the people of the United States. So I say to all veterans, thank you for your service to me, my family, and to the people of the United States. Thank you. Please welcome Company Executive Officer Cadet Lieutenant Alice Hoyt, who will conduct our veterans roll call. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all veterans who have served and those currently serving, I say thank you. For taking the time to honor them today, I will read the following names of current active duty members of the Armed Forces and veterans' names who were submitted by family, friends, and relatives. 
From our local community, the ship's bell will toll at the end of honoring those vets who are dearly departed but not forgotten. Melvin Abel, United States Army. Olivia Alvis, United States Air Force. James Austin, United States Navy. James Barnes, United States Navy. Scott Bath, United States Army. Robert Bra, World War II. Robert Bas Basper, United States Army. Arnold Benson, United States Army. David Bogger, United States Navy. Croton Bowers, United States Army. Jerry Burks, United States Army. Richard Burks, United States Army. Chris Butcher, United States Navy. Gordon Charlie, United States Army. Donald Clark, United States Army. David Coleman, United States Navy. Harold Council, United States Army. Holland John, United States Army. Sergeant Victor Dietz, United States Army. Glenn Blood Duncan, United States Navy. Zach Edwards, Marine Corps. Daryl Erwin, United States Navy. Jim Fleetwood, United States Army. Jim, oh, James Gardner, United States Navy. Kurt Gates, Marine Corps. Ivan Goodwin, United States Army. Dimple Gray, United States Navy. Kelly Ham, Air Force. Joseph Hawks, United States Navy. Troy Hetty, Marine Corps. Rhonda Hedsdorf, United States Navy. Kevin Hedsdorf, United States Navy. Ronald Helms, United States Navy. Wesley Huge, Air Force. Daniel James, United States Army. Royal Roy Jones, United States Army. Justin Jones, United States Army. Avery Jones, Marine Corps. Nathan Kavan, United States Army. Ed Kern. John Legal, United States Marine Corps. John Mayer, Air Force. Tommy Lancaster, United States Army. Arnold Lang, United States Army. Roger Lynn, United States Navy. Tristan Logston, United States Navy. C. John Merrick, United States Navy. Alex Mattingly, National, Army, National Guard. Specialist Andrew Mattingly, United States Army, Sergeant Alden Moore, United States Army, Jim Moore, Marine Corps, Ashlyn Morris, United States Army, A Alex Myers, United States Marine Corps, Justin Neal, Air Force, <coughs> Robert Olmson, United States Army, Robert Onton, United States Army, James Hincock, United States Army, Colonel Clark Red, United States Army, Joseph Rell, United States Navy, Barry Reister, United States Navy, Michaela Richardson, United States Navy, James Richardson, United States Army, Staff Sergeant William Rumpel, Air Force. Stanley Salmon, United States Army. Leland Schnarr, United States Army. Joseph Schultheis, United States Army. George Laverne Stevenson, United States Navy. Art Stoner, United States Army. Max Stowers, United States Air Force. Andrew Street, United States Army. Delmer Street, 
United States Air Force, Sergeant Elgar Luther Street, United States Army, John Tabor, United States Army, John Jim Tadlock, United States Army, Ernest Thompson, United States Army, John Thurston, United States Army, Lewis Turner, Turner, United States Army, Dan Lulu, United States Air Force, Corporal Lloyd Del Wagner, United States Army, Richard Walker, United States Army, Paul Wallen, United States Navy, Selena Webster, United States United States Na Army National Guard, Sergeant Cody Wilson, United States Army, Zane Wilson, Army National Guard, Kelly Wilson, United States Marine Corps, First Lieutenant William Wonder, United States Army, Nathan Worland, United States Air Force. Prisoner of War, Missing in Action, Guards Post. I would also personally like to thank two veterans uh, that are on our school staff, uh, Mr. Kelly Ham and Mr. Jason Smith. Uh, Mr. Ham was in the United States Air Force and Mr. Smith was in the United States Navy. Uh, they both participated with us in this program for the last few years. I want to personally thank them. Thank you. At the center of the gymnasium, you see a small table. This table has been placed there to honor our prisoners of war those whom are still missing in action on this Veterans Day. The items on the table are symbolic of many things. The table is smaller than most, symbolizing the frailty of a prisoner alone against an oppressor. The white tablecloth represents the purity of their response to our country's call to service. The empty chair depicts a missing soldier, sailor, airman, or marine. The table is round to show that our concern for them is never ending. The Bible represents faith in a higher power and the pledge to our country founded as one nation under God. The black napkin stands for the emptiness felt in the hearts of family and friends of POW, MIA, military persons. The single red rose reminds us of their families and loved ones and the red ribbon represents the love of our country which inspired them to answer our nation's call. The yellow candle and its yellow ribbon symbolize the everlasting hope and pure joy of reuniting with those who remain unaccounted for. The slice of lemon on a bread plate. This reminds us of their bitter fate. The salt 
sprinkled upon the bread plate. Represents the tears of their family. The wine glass. Turned upside down. Reminds us that our distinguished service members cannot be here with us to drink a toast or join in the celebration on this holiday. Everyone within the sound of my voice knows someone who has served or is serving our country, and many of you have felt the sting of their absence or risk of losing such a person. Please bow your head. The toll of the bell reminds us of the reverence we owe to our missing servicemen and women. And to those who have guarded and are currently guarding the honor of our country upon sea, in the air, and on foreign soil. Let it be our reminder of the faith we have in them and the faith they in us, and let us not forget our obligations to them. For a few moments of silence, think of only them. Flag detail, post. I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop of the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I fly majestically over great institutions of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is a little higher and my collars a little truer. I bow to no one. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshiped. I am saluted. I am respected, I am revered, I am loved, and I am feared. I have fought every battle of every war for more than 200 years. Valley Forge, Yorktown, Gettysburg, Shiloh, Appomattox, San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, the Argonne Forest, Angelo, Rome, the beaches of Normandy, the deserts of Africa, the cane fields of the Philippines, the rice paddies and jungles of Guam, Okinawa, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Guadalcanal, New Britain, Peleliu, Desert Storm, Iraq, and Afghanistan, a score of places long forgotten by all but those who were with me. I was there. 
I led soldiers. I followed them. I watched over them. They loved me. I was on a small hill on Iwo Jima. I was dirty, battle-worn, and tired. But my soldiers cheered me, and I was proud. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries I've helped set free. It does not hurt, for I am invincible. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country. And when it is by those with whom I have served in battle, it hurts. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the bonds of earth and stand watch over the uncharted new frontiers of space from my vantage point on the moon. I have been a silent witness to all of America's finest hours. But my finest hour comes when I am torn into strips to be used for bandages for my wounded comrades on the field of battle. When I fly at half mast to honor my soldiers. And when I lie in the trembling arms of a grieving parent at the graveside of her fallen son or daughter. I am proud. My name is Old Glory. Dear God, long may I wait. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our Veterans Day ceremony. Thank you.